August 8th, 2022. I remember the moment when I found out the FBI had raided Mar-a-Lago. I felt like the world would never be the same again. And in many ways, it actually hasn't been. Not only the disgraceful raid, but proof beyond any doubt that the FBI and vast portions of the federal government are thoroughly corrupt. The FBI, what they did. And it's even worse than I thought originally. The FBI going in there, that was bad enough. Turns out they were planting evidence. Oh yeah, planting evidence. You see this stuff? Half of it is fake. Half of it was brought by the FBI. Now that picture was designed to make us all scared. Oh, how could, uh, how could Donald Trump have done such a thing? Look at all that secret information. Well, in a court filing today, the government admitted that the sensational looking documents, the one that say secret all over the place, as part of the processing of seized documents marked classified, ERT photographed, evidence retrieval team, okay? The documents with appropriate cover sheets added by FBI personnel next to the box in which they were located. What? Cover sheets added by the FBI, FBI personnel? Yeah, they did that in that picture. All the sensational looking stuff, the stuff they want us to get scared over, the red sheets, the yellow sheets. All right, this is a really big deal. People forget, but when this happened, when this all went down, this picture designed to go viral and that's what it did. Strangers go in and out of this place on a regular basis. Here we are on the screen right now. The image that we're looking at it is the photo that the Department of Justice released showing the documents. You can see what they are. If you look closely, you'll see some of the classification markings uh, on there. You, you'll see the, the sort of the disorganized uh, way some of these documents that the FBI when they conducted their search. Yeah, the FBI, we used to them trust the them. We don't anymore, all right? They were trying to fire everybody up, make everybody freaked out about Donald Trump. First, they sabotaged, tried to, his 2016 campaign. Then the Russian dossier. More recently, fake crime numbers. More talking points for Joe Biden. And never forget, I call this the ultimate moment of hypocrisy. Of course, there was all kinds of secret stuff. Stuff that... Joe Biden had no access to, no right to, no claim to. And they busted him, didn't they? He got away with it. This is the ultimate moment of hypocrisy. When you saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago, what did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? By that, I mean names of people who helped, or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. I hope this comes up at the debate. How dare he? And how dare the FBI? Again, in court papers, we know the FBI staged that photograph. More than just putting stuff on the ground, they brought stuff with them and put it on the ground. It is incredible. It really is. And meanwhile, back to Biden. Remember the stuff in the garage behind his Corvette? I thought, oh, come on, really behind his Corvette? Yeah, he even admitted it. <laughs> he even admitted it. And yet he gets away with it. And yet, I mean, but yeah. Classified material next to your Corvette. What were you thinking? Let me, uh, look, I'm going to get a chance to speak on all this, God willing, soon. But as I said earlier this week, people, and by the way, my Corvette's in a locked garage, okay? So it's not like you're sitting out in the street. So the but street anyway. was in a locked garage. Yes, as well as my Corvette. Wow. I mean, at that point, he really should have been on the verge of resignation or impeachment or whatever. But it just blows over because the New York Times doesn't ratify it as a story. Well, it's all coming out. In that courtroom in Florida before Judge Cannon, and she, the government lies to her time and time again. And then every now and then they try to kind of squeak something in there. Well, we got to come clean on this. They brought the cover sheets in with them to stage a photograph. They brought the uh, cover sheets and they were added by FBI personnel. 
Folks, this should be right up there with the debate. At least here it is, because this is out and out corruption. It's the worst thing. It's the worst thing that the FBI could do. And uh, look at what they're trying to do to Judge Cannon. I mean, she's just challenging the government, which is what a judge is supposed to do. Actually, that's what journalism is supposed to do, right? The way they are talking about this woman. She had two judges come to her asking her to step off the case. Let me tell you something, that just doesn't happen. And when it does, when you have two judges coming to you saying, you need to step off the case, you step off the case. She makes one outrageous comment after another. She is doing everything she can do to play into her critics' view that she is little more than a hack for Donald Trump. The FBI brought in papers to take out President Trump. They brought in scandalous looking material to try to get Donald Trump in trouble falsely. This is what they should be upset about. The FBI has now, there is no doubt, it is a thoroughly corrupt organization, cannot be trusted, sorry. And Jack Smith, my God, where did this guy come from? I mean, this is criminal behavior. This is criminal behavior. They're false, they're trying to influence an election to be sure. One more time, that picture, remember what they did. Never forget. And uh, wow. All right, I do hope it comes up at that debate. Meanwhile, Julian Assange is free. No more questions asked. He got out of jail in the UK. Uh, look, I don't know too much about this guy, but I do know that he was posting some very sensitive military secrets of the United States online for the whole world to see. And for some reasons I can't quite understand totally, uh, guys I like, like Tucker Carlson, thinks it's, he's an awesome dude, and, and Joe Rogan too. And I mean, do they remember Bradley Manning? I know it's a little bit hard to remember Bradley because now he's Chelsea, but Bradley Manning was in Iraq and stole all kinds of documents that probably got a lot of our soldiers killed and may have lengthened the war. Uh, let's go through it documents, cables, you know it. I mean, you name it. He was leaking this stuff, including footage that, well, look, everybody has stuff that they don't want online. Companies do, people do, and yeah, the military does. Folks, war is hell, right? And shooting bad guys is never pretty, but this video was released, and I'm told it fired up uh, a good chunk of the Arab world, and. Some of them still want revenge on us. All right, we just engaged all eight individuals. Now we have two birds. We're still firing. Roger. Got him. Two six. This is a two six. We'll move, but we got this. Oh, right, well, it's on. Bypass. Which guy? Sorry, I hit him by head. All right, we took out the uh, the most extreme part where you saw like eight guys getting shot and killed, whatever. Uh, but the part you can put that down now. Uh, the troops were, were laughing a little bit, and uh, you know what? In warfare, yeah, things happen. It's your job, and there are light moments, even in combat, even when you're doing the unthinkable, even when you're, the unthinkable is your job, and uh, didn't go over too well on the global scene. So Julian Assange seems that, he thinks that that is everybody's business. I don't think so. I think this man should be in prison, actually. And the same goes for uh, Eric Snowden. Is that his name? Snowden, remember him? He downloaded like half of the National Security Administration stuff and brought it to Russia and China, I don't, and, and gave it to some guy in South America. That's not right. I mean, I think our government is way too powerful, has gotten way too carried away, but he could have brought it to, say, an elected senator, you know, one he liked at the Intelligence Committee. But Joe Rogan and the rest of them, I mean, uh, Snowden is like, he's like a hipster. It's like cool. He shows up on his podcast. People are like, uh, how do you live and, and things like that? They're yeah. like, are you taking money from the Russians? And of course the answer is no. But uh, I, I do this for a living. Like I, I speak. I'm, I don't have a YouTube channel where it's, you know, I'm, I'm Joe Rogan. But uh, I give speeches at universities and things like that. 
Uh, I think he should be uh, learning how to make license plates in prison. Somebody once told me, if, imagine if he had a Southern accent, right? Like, would he be viewed as such a hip guy and kind of cool? I don't know. I don't know, because uh, this is a strange country. And sometimes if you're stylish and you appeal to a certain sect, look, the January Sixers, right? One of the reasons why I'm angry at these guys, these guys right here, the January Sixers are doing real time. And those guys, Julian Assange, I know he spent time in British prison, but what about American prison? What about, I don't know. I don't like it. Do you? I'll be right back with uh, what not to expect in this debate, which I think is going to be a giant fiasco. Thanks especially to that woman. <laughs> yeah, forget about Jake. He's, we all know his story, but this woman is really, really out of control.